On this edition of Seahawks Today, we got a lot to talk about. Could Seattle bench Geno Smith for Drew Locke? People are talking. We'll discuss coming up in a matter of moments. Also, Tyler Lockett, could he be retiring at the end of this season? I'll let you hear directly from him what he had to say about that possibility. And we got a few roster updates that we will get to coming up in just a matter of moments right here on today's show. Before we get to all that, though, if you want to Seahawks win, I need you to spam S in the chat. We do it on game days on Sundays. It's a rallying cry. Consider this your pep rally for Sunday. Get those S's in the chat. S's mean W's. I think that's how that works. Get it in the chat. We'll get started with today's show. Could Seattle really bench Geno Smith? Rumors continuing to persist over the last few days about whether or not it is time to bench the Seahawks quarterback after his recent struggles and turn their attention to Drew Locke. He was asked about it this week. Pete Carroll was on Seattle Sports 710, and it was pretty interesting to hear what Pete actually had to say about this possibility. It should be an obvious situation that a guy is not doing his part, and you have to declare where the issues are. It is with the guys up front not being consistent. Are we uh, doing our route stuff right? Are we not calling the game for him? We have to call all the games for the quarterback. That's the key, and we have to make sure we're doing our part there. So there's lots of aspects to this. All right, so let's read between the lines and dissect what Pete is really saying here. Uh, What Pete is saying is that everybody needs to do their job that Gino is not the only one screwing up right now, that other guys have to pick up their weight and put Gino in a position to succeed. He's not ruling out the possibility of benching Gino down the line, but is saying, look, it has to be obvious that Gino is the problem. And right now, it's not obvious. There's all sorts of glaring issues with this team, and it's not just about Gino Smith right now. It isn't time to bench Geno just yet. I am not there right now. The Seahawks aren't there right now. But it's clear if we're talking about the future and moving forward beyond 2023 that the Seahawks do need to find their quarterback of the future this offseason. The numbers from Geno Smith, the last four games have not been pleasant. Averaging around 239 passing yards per game, four touchdowns, six interceptions, and a completion percentage of less than 63% at this point. And his counterpart, Drew Locke, who many are clamoring for, that people want to see given that opportunity, we've only seen a small sample size of. That was when Geno got hurt in the Monday night football game against the New York Giants. Ultimately, he did come back. Drew Locke did lead a touchdown drive in his absence, but... Drew Locke, whether it's been in the preseason or his time with the Denver Broncos, has shown a lot of inconsistencies. It's been very up and down, and that's why he's a backup quarterback. So, what do you guys think? I am opposed to this. I'm not benching Geno. We'll ride or die with Geno. Pete's the same way. That's how the Seahawks feel. They're not making a change. If you were the head coach of the Seattle Seahawks, what would you do right now? Would you bench Geno? Why for yes, in for no? Tell me what you think. That's not all for juicy rumors on this edition of Seahawks Today. Tyler Lockett, the Seahawks' longtime star receiver, uh, addressed some rumors that were kind of of his own doing about potential retirement already at an early age. Nobody was talking about this till he brought it up himself. Luckily for Seahawks fans, he kind of downplayed it. Listen to this. It just sounded like a good year, referencing the year he was thinking about retiring at age 30. It was like my financial lady asked me, when do you want to retire? I said 30. It was like, all right, you're 30. I was like, ah, I'll just keep on playing. At one point, the game is going to end for me, and it's a matter of when it's going to end, but I don't want it to end too short to where I'm like, man, I could have just kept playing. Now, I'll say this before we tell you about today's sponsor here. I don't think Tyler Lockett is going anywhere anytime soon. More on that in just a moment. But first, today's show sponsored by Game Time. Game Time, the place to go for tickets, whether you're going to sporting events, concerts, comedy shows, 
Nader Productions, and more. And you're going to get tickets to the best events for the best seats and the lowest prices guaranteed. This weekend, going to go see my Kansas Jayhawks take on the Manhattan Jaspers in a little college basketball and college basketball heaven in Allen Fieldhouse. Also going to go see a football game, college football game, Kansas taking on Texas Tech. You better believe I'm getting my tickets on game time. Here's what I am offering our viewers here on Seahawks today. If you download game time, I'm going to give you $20 off when you use the promo code Seahawks chat, just because I'm that type of guy. So if you want to start saving like I am this weekend on tickets to Seahawk games or other events you're feeling, download game time today. It's real easy. You pick out the game you want. Prices are listed. Very cheap. I'm telling you that, folks. You get the seat. Get the feel if you like it or not beforehand, and you're checking out within a matter of moments on Apple Pay, Google Pay, whatever you're feeling. It's very easy to use. Easy interface. Download game time. $20 off. Promo code Seahawks chat. Terms and conditions do apply. Download today. Link is in the comments and description of today's video. Now, listen. Tyler Lockett. He's not going anywhere, Uh, and arguably, I would say, based on where the Seahawks are at right now in this playoff push, and comparably speaking to Tyler Lockett's time with this Seattle Seahawks team, not only is he not going anywhere, but the Seahawks need him now more than they ever have before, okay? Tyler Lockett, so far this season, he has 38 catches, 402 yards, three touchdowns, But the big story with him and D.K. Metcalf both is with injuries, they've missed a lot of practice. And I think that's been a reason why, one of, that Geno Smith has not played great, that he and his receivers haven't been on the same page because they haven't necessarily been able to put the work in during the week. The Seahawks need Tyler Lockett to play a significant role in this offense and to have this three-headed monster of their receiving core with DK, with Tyler, with Jackson Smith and Jigba, even Jake Bobo to an extent, Tyler Lockett plays a significant role. And in his 30s now, he's not slowing down. I think he needs to retire as a Seahawk. Whatever it takes, even if he has to end up doing some discount, maybe he gets passed up in the depth chart eventually by JSN, whatever it may be, Tyler Lockett represents everything that's right about being a Seattle Seahawk. And I would hate for him to wear another uniform of anybody else. He needs to retire Seahawk, but he doesn't need to retire anytime soon. A lot of great memories of Tyler Lockett in his short time in Seattle already. What has been your favorite so far? Go down memory lane, put it in the comments section for me of your favorite memory of Tyler Lockett. Folks, you need to subscribe to Seahawks today if you haven't already. Hit that red sub button for all the latest Seahawks news rumors. We're doing our watch parties every game day, live shows each and every Wednesday. Sub now. Best part about it, doesn't cost you a thing. Absolutely 100% free. Subscribe now to Seahawks Today by Chad Sports. More me, more Smitty. What more could you want? Now, before we wrap up today's show, let's go over a couple roster updates for the Seahawks. Some notable changes over the last few days ahead of Sunday's game against Washington. We start with Wide receiver Derek Young. He has been designated for return uh, off of injured reserve where he was at for the first nine weeks of 2023. He doesn't go to the active roster just yet, but it's the first step forward to getting him back on the football field. We'll explain more on Derek Young coming up in just a moment. Derek Thomas, uh, Drake Thomas, rather, who the Seahawks added From the Las Vegas Raiders at the beginning of the season, he's gone to IR with his injury. He's going to be out uh, for a while. And then uh, Austin Fowler, uh, who the Seahawks, you remember, added from the XFL Sea Dragons, uh, started the year on IR, finally got healthy, and was on the active roster for a hot minute. And then just like that, was demoted back to the practice squad. But nonetheless, he's kind of just happy to be there. He's a name to potentially follow. If the Seahawks have an injury on the defensive line, he could find himself uh, getting promoted. Uh, As far as Derek Young goes, let me talk about him for just a second. I really like Derek Young. Uh, Seventh round pick last year, a D2 football player. Gritty, he's really had to work for everything. And he's kind of a do-it-all guy. Um, You know, 
you're looking at somebody that last year was one of the Seahawks' top special teams players, and as the year went along, kind of emerged with a bigger role in the Seahawks' offense. Now, we already know about the top four receivers being set with uh, you know DK and Tyler and JSN and Bobo, and then you know, D. Eskridge is trying to compete for playing time. But don't sleep on Derek Young potentially getting in the mix with those guys as well, especially when it comes to special teams. Uh, he's, he's a good football player. With those moves, where the roster stands right now, how would you grade it? A lot of changes over the last couple of weeks for Seattle. What do you think of this group right now? I think it's still a solid roster. I go B-plus personally. What do you guys think? Grade it for me in that comment section, A, B, C, D, or F, and let us know, and I'll see you next time right here on Seahawks Today.